left off last season with the footsteps. What can you kind of tease about the footsteps? Of the... Well, they belong to a person. They belong to a messy werewolf. So um, you're going to see it. Yes. You're going to see who they belong to, and you're going to see the, the moment of breaking out, actually. Uh, there's a trailer that we're going to show in a little bit. We're going to show you a lot more. We actually, uh, it's a pretty spoilery trailer, but I think it sets up the season and the mystery pretty, pretty nice. Season 5 like wraps a lot of things up really neatly, so can you talk about kind of deciding where to go from there and developing Season 6? Um, it was, a lot of the time these seasons get dictated sort of uh, by what's the new mythology we feel like uh, pursuing, and the Wild Hunt and the Ghost Riders kind of lent itself to a lot of things actually that we needed to do within this new season. I kind of thought Fox 20 was going to be a series finale, so <laughs> we've written a few season finales that actually feel like series finales, um, partly because we treat each, each season like it's its own book. I feel like it should have a sort of end. The cliffhangers are usually there just to some real good questions or good things for the next season. And, um, uh, you'll see. It's a, the jumping off point was the mythology and uh, this new mystery we've come up with. And Cody Christian is obviously here, so he what is. can you kind of tease? I mean, Sophia, uh, season back. six, he's back. Yes. Okay. They, they had to dig him up. Uh, you'll see a little bit of that in the trailer. Um, but uh, for us, it was really not a question of whether he would come back, just a different way. Speaking of the Ghost Riders 2, what can you tell us that we don't already know from what we learned from season 5? Is there anything we can tease about the um, Yes. There, we tie uh, the Ghost Riders into kind of the real world mythology of the mass disappearance. So you'll see how this affects a bit of a global way. Um, our our uh, Beacon Hills kids actually do venture well outside of Beacon Hills in this season. Are we going to encounter uh, any new mythological creatures over the course of the next season? Uh, well, we split the seasons up into two parts, so the Ghost Riders will be there for the first ten episodes, and they encounter the next ten episodes, which uh, we're going to figure out. <laughs> okay. And you talked about taking the step back for season six and trying to get the best brains a little bit. Yeah. How did that end up going for you, and what was it like looking at the season sort of as an outsider? I feel like it's interesting. I was there in the writers' room most every day, um, but I was definitely not as involved as I was in the previous season, production rewrites. Uh, uh, we've been talking about in the 
Um, I think it's interesting. It's an interesting season for Scott to go to go it alone. Posey's uh, talked a little bit about that in the press, but uh, I think it's kind of cool. Um, and the writers have been concentrating on uh, Liam Hayden and uh, Jason Chloe, and uh, I like seeing where those two relationships end. <laughs> but uh, we really went for mystery, uh, kind of ghost story this season, and great credit to the writers for uh, taking the uh, time. <laughs> <laughs> um, there's been a, a remarkable inclusion of the LGBT characters and characters of color as well. And I was wondering if you could talk a little bit about um, the importance to you of that kind of representation and you know, what it means in terms of television and the direction. It's uh, hugely important to me as a gay man myself. Uh, I want to see representation on TV. I want to see, uh, first of all, I want to see the good. I want to see, um, it's, a, it's a really difficult one because there's sections of fandom that believe that some of these you know you want them to have a good death or a good 